Hi everyone, my name is Patrick and I'm a product manager at SAP. Welcome to the second tutorial of our beginner series on how to use SAP process automation. Today we are focusing on what decisions and rules are and how it can customize your process automation to the next level. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below to get informed whenever a new video comes out. If you want to learn the basics of Process Builder within SAP Process Automation, please check out my first video of this tutorial series. It's listed in the description box below. So what are decisions and rules? You can incorporate business decisions within a process with an easy to use user experience and tooling. This capability empowers business users to digitize and automate their business decisions enhancing the decision-making experience. Let us continue with the same business scenario we used in the first tutorial. Imagine I work for a company called ACME. My company faces a problem with IT asset delivery due to global shortages in technology components. In addition, ACME needs to have processes in place dealing with the following two business challenges. Regarding the purchase of IT equipment. For notebooks, have an extended delivery time in the current quarter. Many new notebooks need to go through manager approval for business reasons and IT services for expected delivery date approval. Regarding mobile phones, in stock and can be shipped immediately. However, the corresponding manager needs to approve the purchase as well. Here is where we will incorporate decisions and rules. Let me show you how to do this. My job to be done as a citizen developer is to automate this paper and email based process. Alright, I can't wait to code with no code. Let's go! As you can see, we are already logged on into the lobby and within the all project sections right here, you can also see our YouTube tutorials project which we have created in the first tutorial. In order to use this project, we choose the YouTube tutorials link right here and we will get directly forwarded to the overview. Within this overview, we can already see the different artifacts we have created in our last tutorial. Let's create our new process for the decisions and rules tutorial. The good part here is that we can already reuse the existing forms which we have created in the first tutorial. Furthermore, we also need two more forms and three approval forms. The differences between the approval form and the form are that the approval form is solely relevant for an approval with different mechanisms, while a form itself can be used for several use cases. Let us create the first approval form together. The other forms and approval forms are following the same procedure and we skip in this tutorial. If you want to know how to create a form, please check out my first tutorial. Ok, let's start with the first approval form, the manager approval for the notebook case. Therefore, we save this process builder view right here. Now we choose create and approval. In the pop-up which appears now, we can define a name for our approval form. To make it easy for us to find it afterwards, let's define a name, for example, manager approval for notebook. In addition to that, you can also see the option right here based on a form and this is exactly what we want to have. So we don't need to fill out all the relevant forms again, but we can simply reuse existing forms. So for example, in our case, the order form. We choose create and we will get forwarded to the overview page. Within the form overview right here, we can then see all the relevant information which have been defined in this order form and can edit this accordingly. In addition to that, we also would like to give the manager a chance to comment on this approval. Therefore, let's drag and drop this paragraph right here and say this is a comment section. Within this comment section, we then say we want to include here a text area. And right here we mention this comment section, manager comments. In addition to that, since we have this approval form, you can also see right here the two different options to either approve or reject. All right, that's all ready for this approval form. We will save it 
As mentioned, I will create the remaining two forms and two approval forms now and come back to you in a second. All right, and we are back. We are now in the overview again. As a next step, we have to create two data types. We need those two data types in order to make use of them in the decision creation. And the data type is basically an artifact describing a data structure. Therefore, let's choose right here create and new data type. And first, we create a data type to determine the right approver of the process. So let's say this data type is called approvers. We choose create. And we will get forwarded to the data type detail screen to enter the relevant fields. In our scenario, I want to get the approval from my manager as well as from the IT services department. Therefore, let's maintain the respective two new fields. Let's call the first one for manager. And second, IT services. Afterwards, we save the data types. Now we repeat the step for the second data type. Since it follows the same steps as we did already for the approvers, we forward this step. We maintain now all relevant fields. Let us save the data types right here. And then we will go back to the process builder right here. Okay, next we create a decision to determine the relevant recipients of the purchase requisition. To create a new decision, let's choose again the plus icon right here and say decision, new decision. The pop-up appears and we define a relevant name. For example, and as we want to determine the receiver, we name this right here, receiver determination. We choose create. To define the relevant rules of the decision, we have to open the editor. Therefore, let's choose the three dots right here and say again, open editor. Here, a new window appears. And we maintain on the right hand the relevant input and output of the decision. And as input, we select the app purchase requisition data type as it provides the relevant data. Therefore, we choose right here as type the purchase requisition input. And as output, so the result, we choose the approvers. To add a rule, a text rule or a decision table to a policy, we choose the default policy within the decision diagram on the left hand. Afterwards, we click on the right hand on add rule. Within this wizard right here, which is easy to follow, we can now define a new rule. Let us firstly define a name. So for example, determination, a rule description. We want to determine the correct approver. And as said before, we want to have this as a decision table. Next, we configure the conditions. Left hand into the data types, expand the receiver determination input. And we say right here, the group is important for us the purchase organization and the material. As an operator, which is optional right now, we say it is, should be equal to our input. Next, we configure the results. As a result, we want to inform the approvers. Therefore, we choose on the left hand or for the data type, the IT services, as well as the manager. However, we want to have this in a different order. So we select it and we say move up. Then we click on next step. Here we have again the chance to review all the details we have defined in this rule wizard. Once checked, we choose the create button. So now we have the chance to actually define our rule. And therefore we can see right here, if the organization is in our case 001, the purchasing group is 0001 and the material equals to notebook. We want to inform the manager as well as the IT services. Therefore, I maintain right here the relevant email address of the manager and IT services. 
Next, as we want to support two different steps, we choose the Add Row button right here and say Insert. We repeat the steps again, but in this case the material is actually the mobile phones. Then we only want to inform our manager. Therefore, we only maintain this field for the manager. Afterwards, we save our receiver determination rule and we go back to the process builder view. As the process starts with actually order form to create a purchase requisition of either a notebook or a mobile phone, we must decide which path of the process to trigger in order to fulfill the needs of either approving the notebook by the manager and IT services, or in case of the mobile phone, the manager only. Hence, we create a condition directly after the receiver determination rule. Therefore, let's choose this plus icon right here, select controls and condition. As you can see, the condition gets directly inserted into the process builder view. On the right hand, you can see the branch conditions right here. Let's open the condition editor. We select the item. So in our case, if the material equals to, in our case, notebook, then the manager approval for the notebook should be triggered. Since we executed the different steps of adding a form to a process, defining a subject and the data mapping, as well as adding an action to the process, we fast forward these steps in this tutorial. Let's forward the steps to finalize the process and afterwards save it. As we have now successfully deployed our process, we also want to test it. For example, for the purchase requisition name, ordering a notebook material, we then choose the notebook right here. Quantity, it's one. Desired delivery date, somewhere in the future, would be perfect. Then we have the purchasing organization, purchasing group, as well as a plant. And we say right here, submit. Perfect, so now let's get to the My Inbox of the Approval Manager. And here we are. So this process worked and we have the Manager Approval for Notebook, which is actually the form we have created before. So now I, as a manager, can check the relevant order and provide my comments as well if I'm fine to approve it. In this case, we simply don't need to enter any comments and we can simply say right here, Approve. Let's check how it looks like for the IT services. We are logged on as an IT service employee and we can check the relevant info, provide some comments and say right here, approve. Let's log on now as the initial requester. Amazing, my purchase requisition was successfully created in the S4HANA cloud system and was also approved by my manager as well as by IT services. In conclusion, you have learned how to create a process and specifically learned how to work with decisions and rules in SAP Process Automation to address your business challenges. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next tutorial.